Hello, I'm Lisa Tucker Gray. My pronouns are she and her, and we are Trinity Episcopal Church, a progressive, inclusive, creative community of faith whose building is located in downtown Toledo, Ohio, but whose membership and participation are now worldwide. Wherever you find yourself on your spiritual journey today, know that you are welcome and wanted here. As we go throughout the service today, any time that we're invited to lift our voices in word or song, we will provide words on the screen. So now open your heart and prepare to receive the love that God has for you today. Welcome home. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of friendship, I come to know your love and care through the embodied presence of others. Weave me together with kindred spirits. Knit me more closely with friends of the soul 
cultivate in me a kinship with humanity so that I recognize my struggles and joys in others. In my loneliness, reveal to me this communion and may I be a solace to others who ache for connection. Transform me through conversation and loving presence. Help me to see how I am part of a great circle of pilgrims, witnesses, ancestors, and mystics who guide me to true connection with you. Gather me into your great wide heart so I might discover I am never separate, but always held in love. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Well, welcome back to our sermon series on discipleship. Last week, I shared that we would be spending five Sundays unpacking this theme of discipleship from very different perspectives, each week reflecting through the lens of the stories found in two of the chapters of the Gospel according to Luke. For those taking notes or who like a plan, here's a single word for each of the Sundays, where we've been and where we're going. We'll provide a quick roadmap through each of these words. So last week we started with the word following. Today we are going to explore the word connecting. Next week we will focus on the word listening. And then the following week after that, guest preacher, Trinity member Amy Saylor will be exploring the word responding. And then in our fifth and final week, we will explore the word praying. 
Last Sunday, we focused on the word following. I shared some of my own challenges with the concept of following and suggested that maybe we could consider a path to discipleship by attending to what is here and now. A path both inward into our deepest selves and then moving boldly out into the world, risking our own comfort at times for the sake of a greater good, a greater love, what some of us call the work of the gospel. I implored us to stand up and to speak out and to risk whatever it takes in order to put God's love in the center of our lives, doing everything we can to be mindful of what we're doing, the choices that we're making, the words that we're using, how we're spending our time, talent, and our resources. Today we move on to the word connecting. To get to our word for the day today, we start with the gospel and Jesus' game plan. We hear him today appointing and sending out 70 followers, or 35 pairs as it were, on a kind of spiritual reconnaissance mission. The instructions are simple. Take nothing with you. Take no baggage. Stay only where you are welcome. Eat what is offered. Cure the sick and proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near. And there it is. The first challenge for me today. The phrase, the kingdom of God. A phrase from our Christian lexicon that once again has always made me a little uncomfortable We've worked with that phrase over the years at Trinity, and now I want to circle back and get back to the heart of what is troubling about that phrase for many of us. It seems important that still at the heart of Jesus, he always uses this phrase, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. So I want to find a way to reclaim it, to think through what that means and how we could use that phrase comfortably. Of course, I can do some mental gymnastics and reframe that phrase in less militaristic, paternal, and hierarchical terms as we do from time. I appreciate also the difference between 1st and 21st century contexts, but still, I have never found or been wholly satisfied with that level of reclamation on its own. So, I sat with that discomfort one more time this week, and then I remembered two things that might help us. First is the life work of theologian Ada Maria Sassi Diaz, and then the inspiring ministry who we have referenced before of Father Gregory Boyle, founder of Homeboy Industries in Los Angeles. These are two faithful individuals who have devoted their lives to helping us find a path forward. Together, I think they point to a profound, faithful, and inspiring alternative leading us to, to today's word for our discipleship journey, connecting. In the 1980s, while studying at Union Theological Seminary in New York City, I met a fellow student at the time in our Masters of Divinity program who would forever change how I heard the phrase, Kingdom of God. Ada Maria Asasi Diaz was the first person I heard replace the word kingdom with kingdom, no G, kingdom. She explained that for Latinas, kingdom offered a description of liberation that was self-determining and dependent on the work and love found amidst a community, not one person or place. Ada Maria would go on to become a leading voice in liberation theology circles, authoring the definitive work of Mujerista Theology, focusing on the liberation of Latina women. Kingdom, rather than kingdom, became the language that she used to describe God's liberatad, the liberation of God at work among people, the good news for those who suffer at the hand of kings. She wrote that for Latinas, this liberation emerges from opening up space where love invites us into kinship, deep connection, an invitation to eat and drink at a common and ever-expanding table. Liberation, she wrote, is found not in hope deferred to another world, to life after death, 
but what can be created here and now through our common life, through our deep connection. In 1988, Jesuit priest Gregory Boyle founded Homeboy Industries, now the world's largest gang intervention, rehabilitation, and entry program in the world. This ministry has helped reshape the lives of thousands, not only in East Los Angeles, but through helping others in 147 other similar programs in the United States and 16 programs worldwide. It now creates what is called the Global Homeboy Network. Boyle also spends significant time in his life, in his writing, and in his teaching, helping to rephrase the kingdom of God. So much so that it has also made it into the title of one of his latest books called Barking to the Choir, The Power of Radical Kinship, in which he writes this. Homeboy wants to give rise not only to the idea of redemptive second chances, but also to a new model of church as a community of inclusive kinship and tenderness. At Homeboy Industries, we don't prepare individuals for the real world. We challenge it. For the opposite of the real world is not the unreal world, but the kinship of God. What if we ceased to pledge our allegiance to the bottom line and stood instead with those who line the bottom? Through the wonderful, heartbreaking, and inspiring stories of this ministry, Boyle pleads the case that Jesus' teachings on the kingdom are really, at the end of the day, about one thing, Jesus' desire that we all may be one. And so, as others have done before him, he claims the phrase, the kinship of God, as the singularly most radical and transformative invitation, connecting us to each other and to all of creation. No longer accepting the designations of us and them, just us. No good people and bad people, just people. Not some accepted and some rejected but just all beloved through our brokenness and our blessedness. And this is how I have arrived at the word today, connecting. I feel now new freedom and joy as I am able to put down some years of resistance and instead take up this charge to be reignited as a follower, seeking to live a more connected life, embracing the kinship of God, the community that creates relational understanding one to another. You are mine and I am yours, and together we make up God's kingdom. Living the gospel then, as Boyle suggests, is less about thinking outside the box and more about choosing to live in this ever-widening circle of inclusion. As we say time and time again at Trinity, we are trying to draw the circle wider and wider still. It seems clear to me as we return to the gospel text that Jesus must want us to do the ministry we are sent to do, being connected and grounded in mutuality, interdependence, and trust. We are not here to engage the work of healing and serving and loving and giving alone. We do it together together. And in fact, we need each other and need to be dependent on one another in order to do the work we've been given to do. So how wonderful is it that Jesus has the insight to send 70 pairs of people out? Here is the kinship of God in spades. When one stumbles, the other can help. When one is lost, the other can ask for directions. When one is discouraged, the other can find words of encouragement to keep them going together. That's what we are here to do for each other as well. We hold on to each other. We console each other. We sustain each other. We challenge each other and even believe at times for each other when one of us finds ourselves in the darkness. 
But we forget that from time to time. We forget about the power of radical kinship, I think. We live in a culture that insists it's all up to us as individuals. We are culturally programmed to believe it is up to us to make things happen and to take care of ourselves. Jesus also commands the 70 to take nothing with them, that these followers then must depend on the generosity of others, the kindness of strangers, for their meals, for their place to stay, for, well, just about everything. Most of us find such dependence uncomfortable. It makes us feel like we're not prepared. Maybe it makes us feel unsafe, and it definitely makes us feel vulnerable. And I wonder if that's the point, my friends. I mean, we are vulnerable. The kinship of God is predicated on the notion that if we show up fully as ourselves and for each other, that we will have great need and needs that can only be fulfilled within a community. All of which is to say, I believe that of the many gifts that Jesus gives his disciples during these days, we follow him on his way to Jerusalem. The lesson of reliance and trust in each other, the lesson of connection may be one of the most challenging and one of the most important. Benedictine nun and prolific author Joan Chittister summarizes this reality beautifully, this idea of connecting, when she writes the following. What we learn from the other, we learn about ourselves. The honor with which we regard the other unmasks our own theology of creation. The way we react to the needs of the other tells us something about our own needs. The attention we give to another exposes our real sense of breadth and depth of the universe and stretches it beyond ourselves. We see in others the kind of commitment it takes to go on believing when our own beliefs falter. We look to others for the kind of vision that expands our own beyond the daily. We depend on others for the kind of wisdom that exceeds mere answers. We hold on to others to find the kind of love that makes life rich with meaning, certain proof of the everlasting love of a creator for whom there is no one single word. We must every day take others into the narrow little confines of our lives and listen to their call to us to be about something greater than ourselves. This, my beloved friends, is how I pray we grow into discipleship together, to be connected through our kinship so that we can be indeed about something greater than ourselves. May we seek and find ways to embrace the power of God's kingdom, extending invitations to all to eat and drink at a common and ever-expanding table. May we seek and find ways to embrace, embrace the power of God's kinship, breaking down barriers and choosing to live in an ever-widening circle of inclusion. I give thanks today for the gift of connection and community, for the gift of Trinity at home, for the gift of a community that continues to show up and make itself vulnerable and learn how to depend one on another and for the solidarity of, solidarity of others willing to risk independence for interdependence, to walk in pairs day by day, and for the inspiring story of a man who came not to start a fan club, but to start a revolution of love in which everyone's names will be written in heaven. May it be so. An Affirmation of Faith from the Iona community. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability, 
and into the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, to take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. The Prayers of the People from Women's Uncommon Prayer. Open our lips, O Spirit, that we may proclaim your benevolent truth and call for justice in our communities, in our congregations, and in the world. Spirit, open our lips. Open our minds, O Creator, that we might dream a church reconciled, a church that knows your love so abundantly it bursts with a passion for ministry, a desire to give completely and seeks only to give back. Creator, open our minds. Open our hearts, O giver of gifts, to be transformed by compassion so we will serve others with humility, integrity, and urgency as your servants. Giver of gifts, open our hearts. Open our eyes, O sanctifier of life, to the hurts and needs of others. Teach us to see where our abilities and resources can be used for good. Sanctifier of life, open our eyes. Open our hands, O Spirit, to be your instruments of witness. Help us work without caution, serve without recognition, and proclaim justice, love, and kindness in your name. Spirit, open our hands. Open our memories, O Redeemer of all, as we tenderly remember those who have asked for our prayers, including those on our prayer list and those we now name aloud and in our hearts. Redeemer of all, open our memories. God, your love is free, your compassion unconditional, and your mercy infinite. You shower upon us gifts abundant. Grant that we may know and trust these gifts cultivating faith-filled generosity in our lives each and every day. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Creator God, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life abundant. You give us new life in the water of baptism. You never turn your face from us nor cast us aside. We confess we have turned against you and against our neighbor in thought, word, and deed. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son, and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to all that is good in you. May you be forgiven of all wrongdoing and welcome God's grace anew in your life today. May God's assurance strengthen your resolve to begin again. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet those you're worshiping with today with a sign of God's love and peace. And if you're worshiping by yourself, peace to you this day. Welcome home again, and thank you for being part of Trinity at Home. As we asked last week, I want a favor from each of you. If you are watching from Facebook, I encourage you whenever you are watching to put a comment in the comment section. Just tell us that you're watching and where you're watching from. Also, you can include prayer requests. We will go back and check through the comments. We want to stay connected, and we're aware that more and more people are finding Trinity at home and watching at other times during the week. We are so glad that you are here and that this has found a way into your life. A reminder that this coming Tuesday in July will be our next Welcome to Trinity, 7 to 8 o'clock 
informal Zoom conversation. If you are new to our community and would like to introduce yourself and find out a little bit more about who and what we are all about, a couple people from the Trinity community join me every month to welcome you. Please go to our website and sign up to be sent the Zoom link, and I will look forward to meeting you this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock in Zoom. A reminder that this week is also the week that we are starting our next Film and Faith series. Trinity member Jolene Miller is going to be hosting for the next five Wednesdays. Please go to our website and sign up to receive that Zoom link. We will come together for five Wednesdays. You can come to one or all of the sessions. We will watch a short interview with the late Rachel Held Evans and then have a generative conversation. We look forward to seeing you there. And a reminder once again that we are well into pop-up dinners during this month. This is an opportunity for members and friends of our community to come together into the homes of some of our members. Please go to our website and look and see what is still available. I encourage you, whether you are new to our community or have been here a long time, to receive the invitation to come to one of our members' homes for a relaxed evening of good food and good company. It's now time for the offertory, the time in which we give generously of our financial resources to support the ministry we are given to share together. To do that, you can go to our website and click on the Give tab, drop that down, choose today's date, and give through that platform. You can also text to give. Whatever you give and however you give, your gifts are received with our gratitude for the work that we have been given to do together. So now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. A version of the Lord's Prayer by Roy Hoover and Stephen Patterson. Dear one, closer to us than our own hearts, farther from us than the most distant star, you are beyond naming. May your powerful presence become obvious not only in the undeniable glory of the sky, but also in the seemingly base and common processes of the earth. Give us what we need day by day to keep body and soul together, because clever as you have made us, we still owe our existence to you. We recognize that to be reconciled with you, we must live peaceably and justly with other human beings, putting hate and bitterness behind us. We are torn between our faith in your goodness and our awareness of the evil in your creation. So deliver us from the temptation to despair. Yours alone is the universe and all its majesty and beauty. Good caring presence within us, around us, and above us, hold us in a sense of mystery and wonder. 
Let the fullness of your goodness be within us and around us. Let all the world know your ways of caring and generosity. May we find we have all we need to meet each day without undue anxiety. Please overlook our many stupidities and please help us to release everyone from their stupidities. And may we all know that we are accepted. Strengthen us that we will reach to be our best, always with the faith to rise above the ugly realities of our existence. We celebrate the gifts you have given us, the rich kingdom of life's possibilities, and the power to do good, and the triumphs of good, and the moments when we have seen the glory and wonder of everything. You are life's richness, you are life's power, and you are life's ultimate meaning. Amen. My beloved friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. May the rain fall off your shoulders when you're caught in a storm. When the frost comes a-calling, may it find you safe and warm. May your place be set, and may your promises be kept. And may you never forget that you are loved. blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, descend upon you and saturate your beautiful hearts this day and forevermore. Amen. peace to serve our loving, liberating, life-giving God. We